So you're ready to launch your course, your product or your event on your website and are expecting a lot of people to come to your website and buy the product right away. How do you actually prepare for this from a tracking perspective? In this video, I'm going to give you a checklist on what to check before you actually launch your product in order to make sure your tracking is set up correctly and you can utilize the data for further learning afterwards. All and more coming up right after this. Hey there and welcome back to another video of measureschool.com teaching you the data-driven way of digital marketing. My name is Julian and on this channel we do marketing tech reviews, tutorials and the occasional tips and tricks video just like this one. So if you haven't yet, consider subscribing and also click that bell notification icon so you'll stay up to date with all the new videos that come out. Now today we want to talk about product launches. I had a recent client who wanted to make sure that his website is set up correctly before he actually launched his course. He had everything set up from landing pages, email marketing, automation and now he wanted to make sure that the tracking was actually set up correctly. So what checkpoints did I go through beforehand in order to make sure that he can utilize the data later on for later analysis but also during the launch so he can be more actionable, make more out of his launch during the time that a lot of people come to his website. And this is what I figured out. Now the first point we need to check are your sources tag correctly. This is very important if you want to find out where your users actually came from when they entered your website. So in Google Analytics, we have this great report under the acquisition section where we can see the different sources that our users used to enter our website. Now we don't want our users to come from the direct norm row because that actually means that Google Analytics wasn't able to identify where your users actually came from. To circumvent that, we need to tag our landing page URL in our ads. So we can tell Google Analytics explicitly where the user came from and this will greatly improve the accuracy of this report. Now if you don't know yet how UTM parameters work and how you should tag your URLs then you can check out that video right over here and if you have taken care of that then you'll be able later to look into your source report and find out how many people came actually through that paid acquisition channel, for example, Facebook advertising, what ad did they click on and did they actually convert on your website into a paying customer. Now this is all not possible if you don't have your sources tagged correctly. This is especially true if you're using email marketing. So you send out a email to your list and most of the times Google Analytics will not be able to identify the traffic correctly and therefore will put it into the direct none column. So really make sure you have all the links that are leading to your website tagged correctly so you can later analyze the performance of your marketing campaigns. Which brings us to our second point, which is conversion tracking. Now the missing part here when you want to analyze performance is actually if the user has performed in a way that you intended him to perform, which is in most cases, he bought the product or he signed up to an email list, for example. And therefore you need to set up conversion tracking. Now in Google Analytics, you would do that through goals. In AdWords or in Facebook, you can install a conversion pixel onto your website. So Facebook and AdWords will be able to identify if the user that they sent you actually converted into a paying customer and optimize your campaigns automatically based on this conversion tracking. So make sure you have all the different conversion tracking set up that goes from Google Analytics to Facebook to AdWords and any other kind of paid marketing platform that you're utilizing to send traffic to your website. Be sure to install conversion tracking. It's a crucial part of later making most of the data in your launch. And while you are at it, you should also look at your retargeting setup. Now, if users come to your website and they don't convert, you'll be able to reach them again on different ad platforms. AdWords has a product for this. Facebook has a product for this. So if you install the right pixels on your website, which is mostly called retargeting or audience building, then you want to be able to reach these audiences again that went lost during the initial website visit. So check thoroughly that your retargeting setup correctly. There are different tools out there like the Facebook Pixel Helper or the Google Tag Assistant, which will help you to identify if your pixels are firing correctly and if the list is built up in the background once the user comes to your website. 
Now to get a little bit more advanced, a lot of product launches happen not on the website itself. So the user is not able to buy right away. They actually need to opt into something first. So for example, in software, it would be a trial and later the user actually converts to a paying customer. Or if you drive people to a webinar sign up and later you sell the product on the webinar, you are not able to track that through Google Analytics very accurately because the user actually stops his journey at the point of the opt-in and later is reactivated, comes back to your website. So a lot of attribution methods are lost there and what I would recommend is to install proper lead tracking. Now we have another video on this as well, but what this actually does is it takes the initial source where the user came from and puts it into a hidden form field of the sign up form. So that source will be transferred onto the CRM system or your email marketing system. And you have that available in your contact records. What can you do with this afterwards? Well, if you have a list in your CRM of all the customers who have converted, you can actually analyze the initial source that the user came from in the first place. This gives you great flexibility later on to say, okay, which channel drove most of the signups and make it a little bit more accurate than what you can get in Google Analytics. This is a bit of a manual approach, but nonetheless very important because you have a definitive point where the user came from when he opted in to your email list. So if that's applicable to you, definitely make sure your lead tracking is set up correctly. Which brings us to another advanced technique, which is conversion upload. Now, if you do any kind of paid advertising for your launch, you want to make sure that you have the most information available. So from the lead tracking, we can also get more information here and transfer that back to our lead sources such as Facebook or Google AdWords. Now, additionally to the lead source tracking, so where did the user actually came from, which is information that is important to you, Facebook would also like to have that information or AdWords so they can tell you exactly which ad did the user click so you can optimize your campaigns later. Now, how do you accomplish that? In AdWords, for example, you will need to transfer not only the source, but also the click ID into the CRM system. So later you can have a list of the different users that converted and the click ID that brought the user to your website. Once you have that list, you can then go ahead and re-upload that really into AdWords and do a conversion upload, which will tell Google AdWords which clicks ID actually converted. And then they can feed that back into the system, which will give you a lot of valuable data on which ad actually converted. Facebook has a similar functionality where you can upload the names and the email addresses of the users that converted and then tell you match that up with their system and then tell you which ad actually converted or most likely converted in their system. So if that's applicable to you and you want to go hardcore into the paid advertising and optimizing or paid advertising, then you definitely should make sure that you have all the tracking and all the data in place so you can do conversion upload later into your accounts. Which brings me to our last checkpoint, which are surveys. Now it's super valuable to ask the user once he has bought where he actually came from or where he thinks he heard, first heard about you, maybe what made him buy this product from you today and other general information that might be applicable to your business, to the things that you want to know about your customer. There's no better point to ask your customer right after the purchase these questions. Just send out an automated email asking the user these questions that they can reply to or directly on the thank you page, you can embed a survey that lets your customers answer these questions. Again, you can get very valuable information, especially when something went wrong. So if a user didn't have a good experience, you can find a lot out about this. Maybe it was really hard to purchase on your website or he wasn't able to input all the information that he wanted in your forms, for example. Then you have valuable information, valuable qualitative information that is not always visible through a Google Analytics or a Facebook campaign. And this will give you valuable information to optimize your website and your checkout flow further. So definitely make sure to install some kind of survey after the user purchased your product. All right, that's it with my little checklist. Now, just to recap, the first checkpoint is, are your sources tagged correctly? Second, conversion tracking is set up correctly. The third, retargeting setup is correct. And then for more advanced techniques, you have lead tracking and conversion upload. And last but not least, the surveys that you should do after every purchase. 
So that was my little checklist that I went through and set up for the client in order to make his launch successful, at least from a data perspective and from a learning perspective later on. Now I'd love to hear from you if I forgot anything on this list and if there's anything that you install or you check for before you actually go live with your launch, then let me know in the comments below. And if you haven't yet, then please consider subscribing right over there because we bring you new videos just like this one every week. Now my name is Julian, see you in the next one.